Well, I am very excited to be here with two hip hop legends, two guys that I have been listening to for many years and really, really dig, Dan the Automator and Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Guys, thanks so much for being with me here tonight. And uh, you guys just played an epic set here in the University Union here at Cal Poly State University. Uh, what was it like here to play on a college campus tonight? It was, it was really fun, actually. Very, the crowd was very enthusiastic and receptive. The, the, the only weird thing, it really, honestly, was the um, stage was cement, and it's always weird to <laughs> walk across a um, cement thing. I don't know. That's not a big deal, really. So, so no bounce, no organic right. give, right? right? I mean, like I said, not a big deal. It was just that was the weirdest thing. When I would walk across, I'd feel like this. So you know how like, you in, in the club or whatever, you always feel like the stage is a little weaker than you or something. Yeah, you're yeah, walking across yeah. the concrete. You're like, yeah, I'm weaker than this. Yeah. What, what was your reaction to the stage tonight, Dell? That concrete, were you feeling it? What was the... I don't be tripping, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was having fun, yeah, yeah. rocking the crowd, paying attention to the crowd, man. I wasn't even paying attention to the stage. That's uh, funny that he said that. Yeah. Well, Dan's an observant guy. I mean, he, uh, you know, I think all your production work, Dan, your, your attention to detail just really comes through. And uh, the latest album, Event 2, is no different. Uh, fans have been waiting for this album for over a decade, and it finally dropped. And you guys have been doing some tours, some world tours, yeah. uh, in support of this album. What's that been like to, to travel the globe and uh, play, play the new material? It's, it's been really great. I mean, it's, it's, it's a combination of things for us. It's like... We, we like to make records and we like to do our thing, but also the, the state of the, the, the music business right now, it, you, you have to tour, really. And yeah. like and it's not that we don't want to tour. I mean, I'm saying you have to tour. But so yeah. it's been really fortunate that like all of us, we're having a really good time together, you know. Yeah. It's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like we got together and, 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 and we travel well together. And, you know, there's obviously ups and downs with the overall you know, travel and just the stress of, of going through uh, right. claims and having them go through your stuff yeah, and maybe general, see you know, yeah, being yeah. tired or whatever. But it's, yeah. I gotta say, I, I couldn't think of a better group of people to travel with. It's like been a really good time to just be yeah. together. I mean, it, we actually, there's been moments where like, you know, like, I don't know, there's like 11 of us at, or 10 or 11 or 12 at, on the road at times. And yeah. there's been times like as many of nine of nine or 10 of us have gone out to eat together. I mean, that's not, you know, that's kind of, it just speaks to like the overall kind of good vibe of the whole thing, I think. It's almost like a collective. I mean, I saw you guys when you first debuted some of the Event 2 stuff about a year ago at uh, Rock the Bells up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the most, I mean, a lot of folks were on stage that night. Slick Rick, um, I mean, Eric B, I think, or Rick Cam, I, yeah, or, it was Rick Cam actually, yeah, not Eric B. Uh, and you guys rocked the house and you had a full choir set up. I mean, 10, 15 people in the background. It was, it was almost like angelic. Uh, and is that, do you guys, are you guys accompanied by a choir on your other shows? Um, not every show. We have two shows, though. The Rock Show, which was this one, and then we have the show with the orchestra with, like, eight, eight piece string section, four horns, four choir. Mm -hmm. And, um, we do, we're doing it tomorrow. It's, like, the bigger, the bigger festival. The things I can afford to do, travel with. I mean, like, gotcha. it's, it's prohibitively cost expense, cost excessive yeah. Yeah, imagine, to, to take everywhere, you know what I mean? Okay. So we have to take, take it to, like, the major ones, the major, major bigger spots, because yeah. ultimately, that's how I prefer to do the show yeah. as often as possible. Realizing, of course, the limitation of gotcha. financially speaking. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, for sure, for sure. but like, it's 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 really fun to be able to bring the instruments to life and feel the breathing and the whole thing. It's it's really fun. A really just organic vibe. And Dell, when you started, you know, early '90s. I mean, did you ever think back in the day that you would be playing with like a full-on choir behind you on stage? I mean, no, I wasn't even. I, I wasn't even like you know that musically adapt I don't think you know what I mean yeah. I, I understood it from listening to it but like I didn't even think that rap music would even get this far to tell you the truth you just, know what I'm saying just the evolution of, of it over the last couple decades huh or devolution de whatever you want to you know what I'm saying I mean yeah, yeah. it is what it is once stuff gets commercialized that just was the nature of it you know what I mean I'm just on to the next wave, Wh whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, it's good. I like it, you know what I mean? But to answer your question, nah, I never ima I never imagined this far, of course. I did it because it was fun for me to do. I thought it was something special that yeah. I could do good, so. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know. Well, uh, as Dan was saying, I mean, you guys have been touring the globe in support of Event 2. Um, what have been some standout performances or standout countries? Uh, I'd, I'd reckon that um, maybe Amsterdam <laughs> maybe is a pot, you know, a favorite. But what, what countries did you... Uh... I like France more than Amsterdam, yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. We went to Paris, right? Yeah, we went to Paris a few times. But we also yes. did a bunch of... What happened in France was like... Our, the record got kind of popular and like yeah. 
and like I have a few, I, I produce a few French records, and okay. um, literally you can tour 60, 80 shows a year in France if you're a French artist. Okay. So we, they keep, there's a lot of shows for us. We keep going back and they keep bringing us more shows. We ended up, okay. We ended up doing this TV show where I guess once you do it, it's like, kind of like the Colbert Report of France or whatever. Okay, and once right. you do it, a lot of the a lot of the littler festivals and all the places know you. So mm -hmm. if we if we wanted to, we could probably just keep doing a lot of France. Uh, you guys should put out a French version of Event Two. You'd probably make millions, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they sell any records anywhere in the world right now, but yeah. but um, but America is particularly um, pop oriented, yeah. so that's just that's just the nature of it. And that got to do with just our 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 government, or you know how 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 the country is run. Everything is just yeah. capitalistic, so yeah. it's all about money. Yeah. But I want you to know out there, like it's more than just money. Don't be no sucker chasing money all your life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because sure, it's sure. not all about that. You know what I mean? Well, like you said, Dell. I mean, you and Dan have been keeping it real. I mean, there's a lot of you know, I'm a big fan of hip hop, but when I, you know, I think of kind of folks that epitomize kind of the DIY, I don't want to say indie or underground, but just the true spirit of hip hop. You guys both come pop into my mind. And over the decades, I mean, your repertoire, your guys' discographies are so impressive. You both have um, done collaborations with varied artists. Uh, Dell, in your case, one of your earlier collaborations uh, with a rock performer was with Jay Massey's from Dinosaur Jr. Performing Missing Link from the soundtrack of a new movie called Judgment Night. Please welcome Dinosaur Jr. and Dell, the funky homo sapien. Please, let's check this out. My name is Dell, this is Dinosaur Jr. We about to show you how we do it. Out, so check it out. Hey, I got a story, this is important. Oh, the soft. Dinosaur Jr. will find us gonna ruin you. And I'm a big Dino Judgment Jr. Night. Yeah, the Judgment Night soundtrack. I mean, what was that like, man? He's a good dude, man. Um, that was the first time I really worked with somebody that was like, just just had his chops down as a musician. And I was amazed because like the rest of the band didn't even do nothing. They was in there playing pool or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So Jay actually played everything in that record, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that alone was like, okay, he don't even need these fools, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I just I just learned a lot about being a musician from him. Mm -hmm. And and he learned a lot about hip hop from me. I don't think he was really familiar with hip hop, but he had heard of me, so yeah. he asked for me. Yeah. So it was a learning experience for both of us, I think. I had I had a lot of fun with him, man. Yeah, I remember when that Judgment Night soundtrack dropped and just the different mashups or collaborations on there. And your guys's was the one that was actually probably the first time I ever heard of you, Dell. Actually, because I was a Dino Junior fan, and then I heard that, and I was like, "Who is this Dell cat?" And I got to got to know you a little better, and uh, definitely appreciate all your stuff. And through the years, I mean, you've done a lot of other collaborations. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of with the uh, Gorilla's first album, Damon Albarn. I mean, most recently with Event 2, Zach De La Ro Rocha. Any top collaborations through the years that you just look back and go, man, it was really cool to work with that artist? Um, Tame One for the art, from the Artifacts. Okay. I think that was a good one. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Liff, I enjoyed working with. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, there's a lot of people I work with, yeah. man. I didn't mean to spring a hard question on you, but I just I'm at, I I've I've seen the list, man. It's just so many amazing artists through the years. It really is just whoever I vibe with and wh whoever cool and want to make some stuff because I like making stuff all the time. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whoever can I guess keep up with my pace. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know what I'm saying. That's who I end up working with. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I'm about to work with a. I don't know if you heard of Ladybug Mecca from Diggable Planets. Yes, of course. Okay, yes. I'm working with her on an album now. Really. Okay. Yeah, so wow. that's the next major thing that I'm working on. We're called Beat Intel Pro, or Beat Intellectual Project is Whoa. the name of our project. Wow, wow. Yeah, so. Diggable, I mean, definitely looking back on hip hop of the last couple decades, uh, their stuff is just seminal, just very instrumental. Well, Dan, I'm going to ask you the same hard question, actually. Looking back on your discography of collaborations, um, you know, Handsome Boy, Modeling School, uh, some of your more recent work, actually. I, I found a little information about the title of one of your most recent uh, projects called I Love You, But I Must Drive Off This Cliff Now. That's one of the most... Uh, creative uh, titles that I've heard for <laughs> for a while. Uh, tell me about your collaboration with uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead on that. Well, it really started when, well, obviously we started recording music, but it started when I was um, doing a bunch of music for um, the, this movie called um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Yes, yes. And um, 
and I did it because of Nigel and Edgar and Brian, like we had all met. I knew, okay. I, I mean, I've, I've known Radiohead guys for years, but yeah. but like um, okay. we all met and, and they were talking about like, you know, and Beck's going to do this and we want you mm-hmm. to do this. And I'm like, sounds like a good group of people to me mm-hmm. as far as like, I like all these guys, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. so Edgar was like, um, come up, come up to, um, come up to um, Toronto where they were filming it and yeah. let's let's um, start this stuff, go in the studio and start working on the stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'll go up. And the first night I got there, um, I had dinner with Edgar and a bunch of other people and, and yeah. Mary was one of the people. And like after dinner, Mary was like, you know, I, I really like what you do and actually I'm a big fan, but I'm kind of bummed out. I don't really get to sing on anything you're doing on this movie. And I'm gotcha. like, okay, cool. And I kind of just, you know, filed it away. I didn't yeah. really, really think about it. And then somewhere when I was talking to people here and there about doing this record, they're like, oh, you know, Mary, she sings, you know, she sings, check it out and show me some things. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. You know, she's really good. And, and, and uh, I just thought, well, I saw her again. And I was like, you know what? Let's just try something. And if it, yeah. you know, if it sucks, we'll just pretend we never tried anything. <laughs> yeah. And like, if it's good, you know, we'll, we'll go on and do it. And, yeah. and then, so anyway, that was the beginning of, of the Got a Girl project, which yeah. I'm, I mean, I love, I love Mary. She's, she sounds great. And I think the record works really well. And yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that we got to make it. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, uh, Dan, I mean, you've been, you've been putting out content, I guess, since 89, right? Uh, yeah, late probably. 80s? Yeah. Yeah. But very end, like 90, right? Right at the end. Right yeah. At the uh, of the new uh, decade and then come in you know so you were a performer for a while and then coming into the mid 90s and on of course you became a mega producer uh, what was that like to transition from you know into production uh, with basically 1995's um, uh, Cool Keith's Dr. Octa Gynecologist <laughs> well I mean I, I've always like you know I started out DJing and stuff yeah. and started like all that stuff you know like the first records I really did that people probably know are like DJ Shadow and all that stuff yeah. and, and, and like and we just were all I guess it's hip hop, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, BJs and producers are like the one part of the hip hop. There's rappers, there's, you know, break dancers or graffiti. And so like I guess that was our, 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 our function in that. So it's all it's all its performance in a way, but it's all behind its scene in the own way. What I mean by that is like, you know, you DJ, you're 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 in the party, but you're not part of the party. You're like yeah. you know, I mean you're you're doing that or you're producing, you're making the beats and someone else is rapping on it and fronting it. So like it was always kinda of that thing. So even like with Doctor Octagon, um you know, I'm making the music, so so it's like there's you know Keith is fronting the the character. You know, yeah. what I mean, so that's that's how that works, and you know, much with like Del Deltron or whatever, and like I guess you know more stepping in front of it in terms of personality. Like probably when we started like with Handsome Boy Model in School, me and Paul, right, right. and and being like actually characters in front of the whole thing, because the other stuff I think is the natural position of the producer DJ in the hip hop. Yeah. Um, whatever world well, there's been a lot of talk i mean it's been going back for a long time it's nothing new but uh, especially more in contemporary um hip-hop a lot of talk about you know the role of the dj what is the role of the dj as opposed to the you know the mc and um i mean the DJ is the, star now. the dj is the star now yeah yeah and do you think that's accepted though in the scene or is that are you a minority voice in that respect though Nah, look at the what's popular right now is electronic music. Yeah, yeah. Which the front of that is the DJ. So the DJ now has become the superstar. Gotcha. It's, it's, def- it's, it's definitely true in, in almost all the ways of, of party music and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, I, w- I would say that like, um, it's the, that's not the same thing as a hip hop DJ is what I'm gonna say. That's gotcha. the, that's, that's that's the difference I'm gonna say. Um, like when you right now. The, the general public, I think, is more having more interest in partying and having a good time than they are in like, mm-hmm. um, in like maybe people who like that kind of music are not, not necessarily music fans is in the same way that people who like the, the craft of hip hop. Like the art form, yeah. so to speak. Thank you so much. I know you're both busy and I uh, wish you all the best. Thanks again. Yeah.
Now I'm feeling like a ghost in a shell. I wrote this in jail, playing host to a cell for the pure verbal. This in a sense was equivalent to murder, just another hurdle. I bounced through a portal. I knew they had the mind state of being mortals. My ears morphed to receptors. They catch up every word about gravity control. And the families they hold for handsome ransom. All the one with a handgun, blast by a force, by one. That a planet wide man hunt with cannons will make me abandon my foolish plan of a rising. Fuck dying, I hijack a back. Control with my magical chance, so battle advance. The centuries of hip hop legacy. Better speak like a war, the heart of man, a prison like a toy. We can't fight the force, victory is ours once we strike the sword. And the brother wants me to the horizon. Hey, 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 y'all speaking out in 30. I want y'all to beat down from zero.